Hello, I'm Adrian, and today we're going to be analyzing one of the three most popular heroes of our modern times, Spider-Man. In my Batman video, I clarify that when I say most popular, I don't just mean that they are a popular superhero. Wolverine, Iron Man, and several others qualify for that. I mean that they have transcended that and have become an icon, something that everybody, young and old, knows about. You can go around the world and ask a person to name a couple superheroes, and in their answer, no matter what age they are, they will inevitably include one or three of these guys. Batman, Superman, and Spider-Man. We've already analyzed what makes Batman such a popular superhero, which if you haven't seen you can click on the description of the video, but today we're going to be delving into why people admire and love a hero that mimics the powers of an arachnid. The first thing that makes Spider-Man so different from his other two counterparts is that he is not part of a fictitious city. He doesn't reside in a crime-ridden, gangster-filled Gotham City, nor does he reside in the thriving business capital of Metropolis. He lives in New York City, a real-world location. This immediately places a much deeper connection with the reader or the viewer, as they can see themselves in his world very easily. They can imagine seeing him swinging across them while they are on their morning drive. For being a man that can climb walls and shoot webbing, that makes him incredibly grounded. No fantastical faraway city, just regular New York City. Sure, a whole bunch of other superheroes ended up being located there as well, but Spider-Man is the one which makes the most out of his environment, even on a superficial level. New York City is known for its massive skyscrapers, and how does Spider-Man move around? By attaching his webbing to those buildings and swinging around like a pendulum. On a simply visual standpoint, that looks absolutely amazing. It's a real treat to watch Spider-Man move around, and it's no secret why all the Spider-Man films feature extensive web swinging action. His locomotion is incredibly fun to watch. As awesome as it is to see Batman grapple hook his way into a nearby gargoyle and leap off with his cape to glide down to his next villain, or as cool as it is to see a man take off into the air as if he were a jet and zip through with no limitations, it's undeniably unique to see a man that is using physics, momentum, and a whole lot of science fiction to move about the city. And when he throws in his air flips and wall runs and all the other stunts he knows, well, there really is nobody else who moves quite like him. The design of Spider-Man himself is also immediately distinguishable and instantly iconic. Sure, there have been dozens of variations, and he usually gets a redesign every time he appears in a new series or game, but the colors and general overview of the suit remain the same. His blue, red, and white combination not only looks great in the comics, but it's pretty much remained the same in his live action adaptations as well. The shades may change, but the colors pretty much don't. And fun fact, the blue parts of the costume were originally meant to be black. The big white eyes also mimic those of an arachnid, and depending on the artist can even change to denote different emotions Spider-Man is going through. This was pretty literally recreated in his latest incarnation in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And although his eyes have changed dramatically throughout the years, you still instantly know you're looking at Spider-Man. And perhaps the most iconic part of his suit is his emblem. He has managed to turn something that most people fear over death, spiders, into something people aspire to wear around. The spider may also change shape, size, and even color, but it's always present in any suit he wears. And now we move on to Spider-Man's extremely unique power set. Sure, the way he acquires them is a pretty generic experiment gone wrong trope, this time owing it to being bitten by a radioactive spider, but the effects are awe-inspiring, and of course, amazing. He has super strength, super reflexes, insane agility, can stick to any surface, super healing, and depending on what version you're talking about, is either intelligent enough to build web shooters, or can innately fire webs from his wrists. And perhaps most striking of all, he has the all-powerful spider sense. This is a sense that so many bugs demonstrate in real life. You think you've got the critter cornered, you're ready your attack, and at the last possible moment, it slips or flies away. And that is exactly what Spider-Man does. His spider sense literally warns him of any possible danger, from the smallest things like certain bad people being around, to big things like literally being in danger of being stabbed or shot. And coupled with his other superpowers, he can use this to weave himself around any battlefield, dodging bullets with ease, disarming his enemies, and later subduing them either using his super strength or webbing. As a matter of fact, Spider-Man is one of the most resilient heroes from a purely physical and mental standpoint. He doesn't have a kryptonite like Superman, and he also has the benefit of having real superpowers unlike Batman. And when Spider-Man isn't stronger than his villains, he can easily outsmart them. This brings us to his amazing gallery of villains, and boy does Spider-Man deliver in that department. Venom, Carnage, Green Goblin, Dr. Octopus, Scorpion, The Lizard, Rhino, Mysterio, Electro, the list goes on and on. As a matter of fact, Spider-Man has so many top tier villains in his roster that for all the multiple reboots that he has had in his film adaptations, they can go ahead and use a brand new villain. Sure, they got a little obsessed with the Green Goblin, but think about his live action adaptations. We've already seen the Green Goblin, Dr. Octopus, Sandman, Venom, Electro, Rhino, the Lizard, the Vulture, Shocker, and even someone as obscure as the Tinkerer. 
When it comes to Spider-Man, you don't have to keep dipping back into the same well. You don't have to have multiple guys play the Joker, or multiple guys play Lex Luthor. You have a huge wealth of villains at your disposal, each with their own unique background and power set. Green Goblin has his militarized glider. Dr. Octopus has his incredible mechanical appendages. Rhino has brute strength. Mysterio can perform extremely convincing illusions. Electro can literally generate electricity and fire it from his body. There's so many amazing stories that have been told and continue to be told, and it's great to see such a huge variety in his enemies. The variety gives people something new to look forward to in any incarnation of the hero. But what makes this story so exciting and memorable isn't just the fact that he has incredible superpowers or really awesome villains, it's because of how personal they are to Peter Parker. He is effectively leading a double life and one which is exhausting. He doesn't have billions of dollars to fall back on, nor does he have a really stable job. He is constantly trying to balance being Spider-Man and trying to live a somewhat normal life. But those villains always find a way to rudely interrupt it and force him to make choices which have devastating consequences. Whether it be Mary Jane not wanting to see him anymore because of all the times he has stood her up, or even Aunt May growing distant from him because she actually hates Spider-Man, or simply putting his life at risk every time he goes patrolling as Spider-Man and tries to take pictures of himself to make a living. There's always a threat around the corner, and it usually comes at the expense of him making a personal sacrifice so he can subdue it. And sometimes he comes out losing personally on both sides. The people closest to him grow to resent him, and most of the people believe that Spider-Man is a menace, not a hero, because of the relentless articles that J. Jonah Jameson publishes about him. He even uses the very pictures that Parker provides to make a living, a very sad irony indeed. Things are even made more complicated because Spider-Man is from the team of heroes who are truly straight shooters. He refuses to kill anyone, even those who some would say deserve it. And that means those supervillains he defeats keep coming back again and again to wreak havoc in his life. At one point in the comics, Dr. Octopus literally starts dating Aunt May. That's how messed up things get for poor Spider-Man. This aspect of Spider-Man's life is instantly relatable to anyone. Whether it be your job, your social life, your responsibilities, everyone has different things they need to deal with. And we don't always come out on top, just like Spider-Man. A storyline which needs to be mentioned because it has definitely contributed to his immense popularity is the symbiote storyline. There's been several modifications to the origin of this alien goo and his personality in the recent modern comics, but the basic original symbiote storyline was as follows. Peter Parker is enveloped by an alien black goo that augments every single one of his powers and adds a couple of new ones too, but it suddenly starts to consume him, take over him, as that alien goo is a sentient being that thrives on his aggression and hate. It essentially brings out the worst in his personality, so he manages to get rid of it, but in doing so it bonds with Eddie Brock, a disgraced journalist that happens to hate Spider-Man. And that symbiote brought along the strength of Spider-Man along with all of his other powers, plus optic camo abilities, shape-shifting ones, and a host of other convenient tendril attacks. And not only that, Eddie Brock knows everything about Parker because of the symbiote, and he also doesn't trigger Parker's spider sense. The symbiote storyline thus led to the creation of arguably the most popular villain turned anti-hero of all time, Venom. Think about it, if you're looking at superhero merchandising products, there's a Spider-Man available. Chances are, there's a Venom one too. Because of this, I've had Venom wallets, Venom jackets, Venom t-shirts, countless Venom toys, and I've been able to control them in games such as Maximum Carnage, Ultimate Spider-Man, and Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. The storyline and character is so popular that he's become somewhat mainstream, an odd place for a villain to be in. Sony's even banking on him to launch their own cinematic universe based around Spider-Man characters. But most importantly, the symbiote storyline really places a mirror up to Parker's face and makes you think about what you would be willing to sacrifice for ultimate power. It also tests his intelligence as he cannot defeat Venom by brute strength alone. Not only that, Venom isn't just an anti-Spider-Man. He has his own code of ethics, his own set of additional powers, a really cool design, and essentially different enough from Spider-Man to not just be a clone character, or as Masahiro Sakurai would say, an Echo Fighter. Venom is very different to the villains in films like Iron Man, Ant-Man, Hulk, Doctor Strange, and Black Panther. These are all villains who have the exact same power set as the hero, with no notable differences, unlike Venom. It's kind of repetitive to see the trope used over and over again, but when it comes to Venom, you never know what you're going to get. You can also see Spider-Man's popularity with his merchandising. There are literally hundreds of products available for him, whether it be Spider-Man the toothpaste, Spider-Man the bed sheets, Spider-Man the t-shirt, Spider-Man the cereal, etc, etc. His mask and logo are plastered over virtually every known product to mankind. Furthermore, his action figures are some of the best-selling superhero figures in the world, and range from a couple bucks to literally hundreds of dollars, and people gladly pay up because he's such such an awesome character that means so much to people. Even the recently released video game for the PlayStation 4 has been breaking all kinds of sales records and is estimated to be the highest selling video game of 2018. 
because Spider-Man has the same kind of brand recognition that Mario or Pokemon does in the video game world. Another aspect that contributes to Spider-Man's popularity are his films. They have been around for the past 16 years. So in other words, they constantly keep him in the spotlight. Whereas other heroes have been known to take breaks throughout the years with their films, Spider-Man just keeps on coming back. Sure, a large part of this is due to the deal that Sony agreed to with Marvel, which specified that if a Spider-Man film was not made at least every five years, the rights would revert back to Marvel. So Sony decided to pump them out even if they really weren't sure where the character should go. But the good thing to come out from this is that Spider-Man is kept on the public radar. Every couple of years, people are treated to a brand new movie, so his merchandise is always on display. This coupled with his various animated series, which have been around for decades, have kept him in the pop culture zeitgeist permanently. Spider-Man is so popular because he's a hero which is relatable on a human level. His abilities elevate him to an incredibly powerful superhero, but what keeps him grounded is his environment of New York City along with his problems. He's either strapped for cash, gets a cold, has to attend a function he doesn't really want to. In other words, stuff every one of us has to deal with at some point or another. His conflicts in his life are what bring the superhero out, not necessarily his powers. He's also an extremely sympathetic hero, a naturally good person who tries to do the right thing in every occasion, even if that means sacrificing something personal for the greater good. Besides this, his moral compass never deviates, and he never compromises his values. He's just a guy trying to make ends meet, while also saving New York City, and sometimes the world, in the process. What do you think of Spider-Man? Let me know in the comments below, and subscribe for more awesome videos. You're also more than welcome to check out his dedicated playlist on my channel, which you can find in the description below. See you next time.